This episode is brought to you by Wild. It's finally rib day. <laughs> if you watch the WTF vegan steaks video, you'll have seen a little picture of the rib bones that I made. Here they are. When I made them, I was just kind of trying to relax and do it mindfully, so I didn't film it. But if I make some again, I'll video that for you. All I did was chop the plank down into sections and then used a Dremel multi-tool to sand the sides. And then I punched the drill bit into it several times, waggled it around to make one big hole, and then used the polishing head to kind of smooth everything out. Today, I'll be doing the same process as the steaks that I did. So I'm making a ball of flour, leaving it, soaking it, washing it, and then wrapping strands around these. And then this time I'm gonna bake it in the oven because I think that's gonna give a chewier texture. There's a group on Facebook called Mangled Brains and Drooping Genitalia, all about WTF. So I've been asking some questions in there and the admin has been very patiently giving me some tips. So she recommended getting a dough hook. This is a Danish dough hook. And she said, because I explained that I have, I get joint pain. So she said, get one of these. That kind of helps that make it a little bit easier. So on to making the dough. I'm using strong white bread flour. Wash the flour seitan apparently will work with lots of different types of flours. We really want the higher amount of gluten as possible. And the way of checking, so when you pick up the packet, look for the nutrition info, and then you're looking for protein, which is somewhere on there. And this one has 13.4 grams of protein. And the protein is the gluten, and the rest of it is kind of starch. This is a kilo and a half bag of flour, so that's about 3.3 pounds. I've got around a litre of cold water there. Last time I used 800 mils, but don't, you do need to do this, you know, different flours react differently. So, you know, don't copy these ingredients. Pour in a little bit. And about 500 mils of water. Now it's at this stage, it's just becoming quite difficult to do it in the bowl. So I'm gonna tip it onto the worktop. I'm just breaking it up a little bit. I'm gonna sprinkle water over the top. So this is what we want, it's starting to form a big cohesive lump. I'm tearing it open to get sort of wet dough and use that bit like a cloth. Okay, so that's all together. And I used 700 mils of water. I dropped that back into the bowl cover it with a damp tea towel. We're at 145 at the moment, so I'm gonna leave that for an hour. And I'm gonna crack on with making a couple of glazes. I've had this idea for a while. I thought, oh, that might be really nice to try. <laughs> so today's the day. I'm going to boil down, I've got a two litre bottle of cola. I'm gonna do half of it with chipotle chilies and then I'll add some tequila. And then I'm gonna do another one with kind of Asian inspired flavors. So there'll be some five spice, Sichuan pepper and star anise, as well as some, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, Zhaoxing maybe, rice wine. So half into each. Conveniently, there's a little line halfway through. Add in the chipotles. These are a lovely smoky, deep flavored chili. Really tasty. Add one star anise. Half a teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorns, half a teaspoon of five spice, and just let this boil down for a while. And then I'll add the other bits later on. So here we are with the chipotle one. The other one still has a fair bit to go. And I think it's because the bottom of the pan is buckled. <laughs> so it just, the heat isn't even. So I'm gonna add in a couple more bits into the chipotle one. Those chilies were quite old, so the flavor's a little bit muted. So I might add in a bit of chipotle Tabasco. You can see, it coats the spoon beautifully. I'm gonna add a bit of chipotle Tabasco and some of the tequila. A couple of drops, not much. And a teaspoon of tequila. Work that together with a brush, just to really blend everything. I was coming off this and delicious. Give that a try. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sweetness and then a punch from the chili. So I'm gonna pull this through a sieve into just a little dish ready to then brush onto the ribs. I'm kind of mashing the chilies down just to squeeze out any last bits. 
The other syrup is almost ready now, so I'm going to pop in the Shaoxing, I think it's called. I saw someone at a Chinese cookery class on YouTube, <laughs> so that's what I'm going for. So I'll do about a teaspoon of that, and again brush it in. This one still has a bit further to go, but I'm just going to check the flavour. buttery flavour to it. <laughs> That's my favourite. <laughs> so again, I'm going to strain it into a little bowl ready for brushing on. I'll put these to the side, let them cool down. We'll make up the seasoning mix. It should only take a minute or so. Pinch of celery seeds, brown sumac. This has a really nice tanginess to it. It's like iron flavour. It's half a teaspoon. Quarter teaspoon of ground garlic. Half a teaspoon of onion powder. Quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. A pinch of English mustard powder. Quarter teaspoon of salt. A tablespoon of beef flavour stock. A tablespoon of beetroot powder. A teaspoon of roast mushroom powder. Quarter teaspoon of celery powder. Quarter teaspoon of dried lemon. And then blast everything together. And I'll put this to the side for when I need it. And then it's time for the washing, which is the messiest part of it. The people over at Wild have sent me a package of their natural deodorants. These are aluminium free as well as plastic free and they're just lacking in all of the uh, kind of intense chemicals that are in a lot of commercial brands. So inside the first pack that you get, you select the colour of case that you like. There's several ones to choose from and they've also personalised it for me, which is super cute. And these are the refills that they send. So I've got sandalwood and patchouli, watermelon spritz and orange zest. And they all smell incredible. I should have put one in on camera for you to show you how easy it is, but there are instructions in the packet there for you. It's very easy. What you do is take the lid off and then put that into the case and then you're ready to go. Also comes with a little welcome card that shows you all about the product and the different scents that they have. So you've got things like coconut dreams, lavender haze, bergamot rituals, fresh cotton and sea salt, eucalyptus and mint. So there should be something in there that's gonna really suit your preferred smell. They also do a range for sensitive skins as well. And all of the ingredients are listed on here. So you'll be able to see if there's anything in there that you need to avoid. You can buy the deodorants as a one-off or you can sign up to their subscription service. If you subscribe to the service, you get a case and one refill. And then a month later, they'll send you another pack with three refills. So the intent is that one will last you a month. The packaging is either recyclable or compostable, depending on which component it is. If you'd like to try Wild for yourself, head over to wearewild.com and use code RACHEL20 to get 20% off your first order. I have a different top on because I think it's going to be sensible to have short sleeves while washing the starch out. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to explain a couple of these ingredients. When I did the steaks, I wanted celery and mushroom in there to give some extra flavor, but it just didn't quite work. So I thought, what if I dry them and then use powders? Maybe that'll bring the flavor in. I did a load of mushrooms in the same way that I did for the steaks, also for the chili and bolognese, and I feel like there's something else as well. Loads of flavors, roasted them, and then spread them out on trays in the dehydrator and blasted it for 24 hours or so, and then ended up with a really fine powder. When I tasted the steaks last time, the flavor was great, but it was missing a bit of brightness that I remember me having. So I thought maybe do some lemon in there. So I, same thing, dried some lemon and then put that in the coffee grinder. It's gone very sticky, I think, because there's some pectin and sugars in lemon. So it is kind of clumpy, but nonetheless. And same, I did a load, that's a whole bunch of celery. When I was drying the celery and the lemon, the house smelled like baked chicken. <laughs> so if I do decide to do a chicken dress, that's what I'll be using in there, along with some chicken stock, chicken flavor stock. Onto the washing. The doughs worked perfectly, doing what Grace recommended. So yeah, just other than that minimal bit of kneading, just to get everything together, it's gone very stretchy. Do the window pane test. So the translucency there indicates that the gluten's really well developed. So I've learned my lesson from last time, because <laughs> that bowl just isn't big enough for doing the washing thoroughly. So I'm gonna 
blob it in there. I'm gonna pour over some cold water, enough to submerge it. I've got a pan set up here that I'm gonna pour the runoff into, which is gonna be the spawn. It's the spawn of Satan. Uh, I'm gonna do something with that this time. I'm not gonna leave it in the fridge to go funky. <laughs> The admin from Mangled Brains and Drooping Genitalia also recommended to use a potato masher for doing the washing, just so I don't have to then rely on moving my fingers as much. So I'm gonna give it a try. Sometimes though gripping and using force can set my joints off. So we'll see what works. So I'm just gonna, yeah, get stuck in, I think. And you'll see that the water starts going cloudy. The masher does work somewhat. I think I'm going to go in with my fingers and do this kind of motion under the water. The texture is kind of a bit chewing gum like. Stop the camera there, put some music on and perhaps grab a beer. And it doesn't feel like quite as much of a chore. <laughs> and then see you back for the second wash. Once I turn the camera off, I decided to have another crack with the masher and it works really well. So I pulled everything to one edge of the bowl and worked on a small piece at a time. What I'll do next time when I make seitan, I'll pack everything into a shallow dish and cover that with a little bit of water and then pull small chunks into the main washing bowl because I think that's going to give more manoeuvrability rather than having to kind of keep everything pinned and corralled in. And you'll know you're getting to a good stage where it goes really stringy and stretchy rather than just a big clump of dough. You know that you're pretty much there. The first wash is done, everything's in the strainer. So what I'm gonna do now is get some fresh cold water and rinse this under slightly warm water. Again, I saw in that group that it, it can be helpful to alternate. Just give this a bit of a rinse. It doesn't have to be too thorough. So there still is starch coming out of it. I'm gonna give it all one more cold bath and then start making some decisions. And I've poured more cold water in there. You can see how elastic and stretchy it is. As you manipulate it, you can feel the starch. It feels quite silky. Whereas the more you wash it, it starts feeling a little bit, yeah, maybe a little bit rubbery. I think I'm gonna take some of this and keep it aside to do fat marbling. And so twist it into strands. And then the rest, I will do another warm rinse and maybe one more cold and see how it looks. So I'm just trying to squeeze off a bit of the excess and then blob it into a bottle. So I've taken that much out and that's going to be fat marbling that will thread through the strands before putting on the bones. And just second warm water rinse. And you can see this time it's much more compact. And there's not tons of starch coming out of it. So that's a one and a half kilo bag of flour. Yeah, I think that is actually a good place to move on from. So it's now time for the seasoning. Last time I did it in the food processor, and I want to try doing it in the blender. Touch wood, it's going to be okay. I'll do the fat layer first. So this is the one that had two washes and one warm water rinse. I'm going to blob bits of the fat layer into the blender. Turn it into kind of four chunks. Half a teaspoon of mushroom powder. A couple of drops of lemon juice. Not much. And half a teaspoon of melted coconut oil. Blend that for a few seconds. I can smell burn plastic already. That's not great. <laughs> Pull it all out. Back into the bowl. I'm going to switch to the food processor. I just don't trust this blender. Again, blob in the gluten. Tear it up. Just realised I forgot to put coffee in the seasoning mix. I'm doing that much. Pour on the seasoning mix. And about a quarter teaspoon of Henderson's relish. A little blob of marmite, a little bit of treacle, and about a teaspoon of finely grated cacao. I made this, which is the kind of dregs from my bottle of tamarind paste, and I made a really strong batch of lapsang tea and kind of shook it out. So I'll pour in a little bit of that, because both have a quite meaty sort of vibe to them. A 
lid on the food processor and then hope for the best. <laughs> planned on soaking these because it's better to do that to stop them burning um, but I'm rapidly running out of energy and daylight <laughs> so I'm just going to do it and if they burn they burn um, but yeah ideally I should have soaked those for about an hour and I planned on putting extra flavour in the water so it could soak up even more. I mean that just looks like raw meat doesn't it? <laughs> because there's a load of water coming out of it I'm just going to run that through the strainer and bloop it in. <laughs> Strain off the excess liquid. So I've got my bones. And this is still very theoretical in my head. <laughs> so we're about to find out if my idea is going to work. Let's begin. She says so confidently. There is still a lot of wetness on there. So I'm going to lob it onto here. Kind of scooch it around on there. I'm going to slap it on there a bit. And this is going to help realign the gluten and then fold it. So now I'm going to try and get it into a length, get a bit of fat and sort of stretch that. Lay that onto it. Not even twist it. It's running throughout. So one end's got a hole, the other one doesn't. So I'm going to start at that end. maybe a thumb's distance. I'm going to lay it on there for now. I'm going to do seven of those for each flavour of uh, glaze. You can kind of manipulate it on the stick a little bit. And then, in fact, for now, I'm just going to lay them side by side and then we'll see how many I get. So I'll see you when I've done all of those. So I've got 10 little sticks <laughs> all together. So I'm going to do two lots of five. So then I've got two different ones for the glazes. So now it's time to start assembling. I've got the oven on at 180. I've never baked seitan before, so I've no idea if that's the right temperature. I'm going to push them into a row, and then I've got the bits that kind of pulled off. So tear that into chunks, and then spread it out, and kind of wrap that on. You kind of place it and then leave it and then it kind of meshes again and then you can sort of start arranging it. I also reserved some of the fats and then do a bit of marbling. As I was working it, it really does feel like uh, almost like sinew. <laughs> Flip it. Yeah, two less sticks would have been better because I might have had plenty of coating. All right, I'll do the other one. These are nearly done. The second one I did went better. If you can, on that top layer, get a piece and just keep trying to stretch it out into one big sheet. I did that one for the social media, so it's in portrait. <laughs> Maybe I'll stick it here for you. <laughs> Oven's been preheating at 180. Yeah, and I just don't know how long these are gonna take. So I think I'm gonna put them in for um, half an hour. I'm gonna do half, I'm gonna do 20 minutes and then check them. I'm going to do them like this and then I'll put the glaze on for another 10 minutes towards the end. Yeah, so we'll see you in 20. The ribs have been in 15 minutes and they've puffed up a lot. <laughs> 180 is way too high. I've gone to 150. I'm also a bit worried that the outside is drying out a touch. So I think I'm going to use some of that spawn with I kind of scraped out the coffee grinder with the seasoning. I've put an extra bit of beef stock in. I'm going to put a few spoonfuls and mix it together and maybe brush that on the top. See what happens. So there it is. Definitely puffier. Tell you what though, it smells incredible. Okay, 
So a lot of that is air. So I'm just going to brush this over. This might be a horrible idea, <laughs> but we'll find out. I so just want this to provide a bit of juice on the outside. Just so it doesn't, uh, doesn't dry out too much. 85. See? Okay. So it's still very claggy inside. Not sure how I feel about it at this stage. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still very mushy to say it's been in 20 minutes. Yeah, I'll give it another 20 at 150. And then, I don't know. Take it from there. Ribs have been in for 40 minutes now, so let's have a check. On reflection, putting the spawn over the top was probably a stupid idea because all I've done is put more dry stuff, ultimately. <laughs> but I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm just not thinking properly. Perhaps it'll make a nice foundation for when I put the glaze on. Okay, that feels a bit bouncy. So again, I'm gonna sneak the probe in and just see. see how the... Okay, probe is, it feels a little bit sticky still. All right, I think that might be a good point to then put the glazes on. As I feared, they've <laughs> gone very, very thick. Put them in a shallow dish and pour boiling water into the dish. Okay, this one is starting to move. That's great news. <laughs> I'm so pleased that it's worked. I'm not gonna lie, there was a minute when I thought, oh no, you've completely ruined it. <laughs> Right, I'm going to do the kind of Asian inspired flavours first because that one's nice and liquid. Get it all slathered on on the bottom. Daub it on and then I'm going to have to go in kind of carefully around the bones. <laughs> Bit of uh, cutting in like you would on your woodwork. I'm hoping that this is going to get kind of really sticky and almost like candy. I'm going to rub it on quite thickly and try and get the syrup to just run in the cracks. Put those on for another 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe do another glaze, we'll see. So the ribs have been on for just over 10 minutes with the glaze on. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say this, okay? This is a stupid amount of work. <laughs> and I'm in agony. But you really don't have to go to the extent I've done it, but obviously I have a YouTube channel, so things have to be extra. But you could very, a, a simple way of doing it would be to form the dough into a kind of rectangle and then shove sticks into it. Um, if you wanted to get that marbling through it, chop it down into maybe four pieces and sort of wrap the fat marble around and then pack it back together. Or maybe even twist it a little bit. And then, you know, stick the sticks in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I'm smiling, but I'm inside, I'm dying. It's fairly straightforward and it's not expert level, but it does need a little bit of dexterity and patience and, you know, decent timekeeping. <laughs> so the glaze, you can see it all bubbling away in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna touch it. It's, it's a little bit sticky and gooey. <laughs> this meat fork does not really get used anymore. Take one of the middle ones. Just show you. Yep, it's cooked all the way through. Time to dive in. Yes! So I'm going to go with the tequila one first. The texture's good. It could perhaps be a bit juicier, and I had thought about injecting some kind of stock into it or something, but I just, yeah. <laughs> I'm exhausted. But anyway, let's dive in. Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. Mm. <laughs> it's almost worth the amount of pain I'm in. <gasps> mm. That glaze has given it a really lovely kind of crust that you then sink your cheese into and the flavours there very beefy it's very tender but also chewy my memory of eating ribs is when you bite into it 
this kind of um, almost like a skin, and I think that might be the fascia, the muscle fascia. And then because the way <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this, but okay, so the I think a, a slight crust has formed on the top of the dough, and then putting the glaze on there has made that chewy. So it's very reminiscent of of that crunchy, sinewy sort of stuff. So this is the sort of Asian-inspired flavors. Mm. <laughs> mm. I am so happy I have this idea. Goodness, that especially on a barbecue to have those kind of smoky charred flavors. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It really has got a similar texture to ribs. So it's got the kind of tear that rib meat does, despite the ridiculous amount of hours and incredible amount of pain that I'm in. That is a fantastic reward. Once I've polished them all off, I will try and kind of clean up the rib bones just in case I ever decide to do this again. Although I'm not promising anything because it's a lot. But if you do and you want to do the, if you want to get a bit of extra juice so it kind of bursts out into your mouth when you eat it, maybe mix some, um, reserve some of the seasoning, mix it with water and perhaps potato starch or some sort of gelling agent and then inject it because you have got lots of there are holes in here so i think once it's cold it will fill those holes and then you can just blast it on a grill you know like on a barbecue or in a hot pan and it will warm it up and just melt that a little bit so hit subscribe and tap the bell icon if you want to follow along on my journey to the quest of the ultimate vegan meat